Elias Abdomol. And the first we start is Elia Abdi. And Bleuler from the University of Toronto and Lausanne, Switzerland. Third arm for surgeon feasibility and applications. research on the possibility of having a third arm for surgeons. We have nothing to disclose. As we know, the surgical tasks are usually long-lasting and repetitive. They need high precision and force, and they need collaboration among the surgical team. Surgeons need assistance for different types of tasks, such as securing, holding the endoscope in laparoscopic surgery, holding a suction apparatus, and retracting organs out of the way. If the assistant is novice or unfamiliar with the surgeon, this can be the source of error and inefficiency during the surgery. So we thought what if we could have a third additional robotic arm under the control of the surgeon to make him or her more autonomous and dexterous. So the ultimate goal of this project is the development of a robotic surgical application to be used as a third hand. To this end, the specific goals of the present research is the study of the possibility of controlling the third hand by foot, the learning curve of the subjects, the individual differences that we can find between people, and the appropriate level of complexity of the task that can be reached. To this end, we have developed a set of experimental studies in virtual reality. The first setup consists only of visual feedback, meaning that we will have three virtual hands on the screen. We have two cameras, one of which detects the movements uh, of the two hands, and another one detects the movements of the foot. The second experimental setup consists of having visual and force feedback together. We have two haptic devices for the two hands so that we can have force feedback on the hands, meaning that when we touch an object in virtual reality, we can feel it. And then there is a foot mouse for the foot to detect the movements. Here is an example of the type of task that it didn't, sorry, it didn't come up. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, of the type of task that I'm talking about. Here we have three virtual hands on the screen. The two gray hands mimic the movement of the two real hands, and the yellow hand that is in the middle is controlled by the foot. Three objects are falling on the screen from top to bottom, and the task is to try to catch them before they reach the ground. The first experiment with only visual feedback was performed with 13 subjects, mostly in juniors aged between 18 and 30 years old, and we had three different types of games with different levels of motion. Here are the results. We could see as we go on through the three games, they feel more natural to control the third hand by foot, the sense of ownership was improved through the th three games, and the physical and mental uh, burden was low. What was also interesting to see was here, we could see that in the second game, which is represented in red, people uh, found it this, the, the, the most difficult game because they were asked to move their two hands on the foot simultaneously in different directions. And this was perceived as the most difficult one. Whereas in the third game, which has been perceived as the easiest one, they were asked to be more active and to, to do a more active task, but they were free to choose the sequence of their limbs, and this made the game easier for them. We could also see that people move their limbs in parallel rather than serially, meaning that they do not move their two hands on the foot separately. And after a few minutes of practice, they improved significantly. The second experiment with visual and force feedback was performed with 30 subjects who were surgeons, residents, and medical students. And the task was again to catch the four objects that were falling on the screen, but this time each object should have been caught with both hands, and the foot was used to move the camera and to find the hidden objects on the screen and to catch them too. We could see that the performance quality varies largely among the subjects, and their performance is independent of the gender of people and their proficiency in video games. What was interesting to see was that uh, here we asked people if it has felt natural for them to move their limbs in independently. 
And we could see that those aged between 31 and 40 years old were, the, were those who find the, the task more natural. And also the same group of people uh, reported less level of confusion for the game. So we came to the conclusion that uh, surgeons aged between 31 and 40 years old with a three to four years of experiment were the best in performance. So as a conclusion, within a few minutes of practice, people start to find the control paradigm natural and easy. Moving the foot in opposite direction of the hands is perceived as difficult. Candidates were able to coordinate the use of hands and foot to perform a task. And 31 to 40 years old surgeons with three to four years of experiment were the best in performance. Thanks for your attention. Questions from the floor? I do have a question. What do you think is the time frame for real operating with this technique? Yeah, it will, it will actually take a while because the first thing is that now we are uh, programming some experiments in with real robots because we cannot stay in virtual reality, of course. We are developing a foot interface specialized for that. And then since it's going to be with humans, uh, we, we will need to first go with animals and to pass all the ethical 